Hello there, watching uh, Eye on Africa. I'm Rochelle Ferguson, BI. These are the top stories. Three Kenyan election officials resigned, sparking further chaos at the country's election commission just months on from a botched presidential vote. Israel releases 200 African migrants from prison after failing to finalise a deal to deport them and others who've entered the country illegally. And after a year of fighting in DR Congo's Kazai region, the community is trying to come to terms with the crisis. Our correspondent, Thomas Nicolan, has been uh, speaking to former militiamen. But first to our top story, three Kenyan officials have stepped down this uh, Monday, triggering further uncertainty as the country's election commission. Well, all that comes just months on from a botched presidential vote. The resignations mean that there are just two out of six commissioners at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Have a listen. The institution has continued to be disinfunctional with arbitrary decision making leaking of internal documents to serve personal goals and pursuing of personal interests, all of which are against the laid down laws that govern the conduct of the commission leadership and staff. Well, last week, the IEBC sent its chief executive on three months compulsory leave pending the outcome of an audit. Earlier, I spoke to our correspondent, Ruben Kayama, for more information about the three commissioners who stepped down. The election results of the presidential, uh, uh, presidential election of August last year was nullified, were nullified by the Supreme Court. And actually, uh, right after that, there has been a lot of chaos witnessed in the commission. And the resignation uh, of, of these three officials now leave only three commissioners, I mean, only two commissioners and their chairman uh, at the helm of the Independent and Electoral Commission, which last week, as you said, sent its uh, chief executive on a compulsory leave. Uh, this morning, when they were releasing their press uh, statement to the, to the members of the press, they noted that... Uh, the, 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 the reason why they were actually resigning is because they, 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 they were accusing the, the, the chairman, uh, Mr. Chebukati, of uh, uh, failing to provide leadership into the, into the electoral body. I mean, it's fair to say, Ruben, that uh, Kenya's uh, election commission is in complete disarray now. What next? What, where can it go from here? Yes, indeed. Uh, following the resignations today, uh, some senior members of uh, some senior politicians here have called on the chairman and the two remaining commissioners to uh, to step aside uh, within a week. And uh, they they have also gone gone ahead and said that uh, if they they if they should should they not do so to step aside, then a tribunal will be formed. Uh, in Parliament to look into their contact. And this is to try to push them uh, to, to, to actually resign and provide, uh, uh, provide room for, 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 you know, for, for new commission to be formed. Staying in Kenya, the firebrand politician and businessman Kenneth Matiba has died aged 85 following a long illness. Matiba began his uh, political life, life uh, soon after independence in 1963. He was a key figure in the fight for multi-party democracy, becoming the first minister to resign from ex-president Daniel Arap Moy's cabinet. That was when he created single-party state. Well, fellow activists have hailed Matiba as a champion of democracy. Here's what residents in Nairobi had to say. I remember him as a fighter. I remember reading his profiles on those notes, those books that he gave us, and I thought he was a good entrepreneur at the same time, and I thought he could have also made a good president. So I feel very sad that he is no longer here with us, and I also feel sad that his political career was short-lived. I believe that if he was still around and we had such kind of people, that things would have been better in this country. Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari has met with the UK's Prime Minister Theresa May at uh, number 10, 10, 10 Downing Street. 75-year-old former military ruler announced last week that he will seek a second term in elections next year. He flew to Britain for talks with May shortly after that announcement. Buhari's office has said he's scheduled to participate in a meeting of the Commonwealth heads of government. South African authorities have raided a Johannesburg property belonging to the Guptas, a wealthy business family at the heart of graft allegations against the country's former president, Jacob Zuma. 
Well, the prosecution said earlier that officials were enforcing a court order. Authorities have uh, put the property and other assets under restraint pending the finalisation of the criminal case. Israel has released some 200 African migrants from jail after failing to finalise a deal to deport them and others who entered the country illegally. While the migrants were imprisoned after failing to sign papers agreeing to deportation to either Rwanda or Uganda, Israel's High Court, though, ruled that without a deal with a third country, the men should go free, as France 24's Simon Harding now explains. For the time being, they are free. Following an Israeli High Court order, 207 African migrants were released from the Saharan in prison. They had been detained because they refused to leave the country voluntarily, supposedly to Uganda, who confirmed they were considering Israel's deportation plan. Why would I agree? It's not my country. Why do I have to go there? What do I have there? I need to wait here, to wait a bit longer until things are organised. Right-wing politicians had put pressure on the government to not allow any of the migrants to remain on the territory. But controversial plans for mass deportations to several African countries were recently suspended by Israel. The offer of a cash incentive and plane ticket to go voluntarily or be forcefully removed was widely condemned by rights groups. There will be no deportation. Too many Israelis are against the deportation, it's against the law, it's against the international law. There will be no deportation. Adding to the confusion, earlier this month, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cancelled a deal with the UN to relocate African migrants living in the country. The result? Most of the released men are now unsure what to do or where to go. The High Court has also ordered the government to put any deportation plans on hold for the next two weeks. Now, a year after fighting in DR Congo's Kazai region, tensions there have decreased ever so slightly. The community is now trying to better understand the crisis, which plunged several provinces into chaos. Well, thousands died, more than one million people were displaced. Our correspondent Thomas Nicolon went to Kananga in central Kazai to meet with former militiamen. The names have been changed to protect their identity. In Kananga, welcome centres have taken in a number of former Kamwin and Sapu militia men. These children, who greet us with songs, all carried out massacres during the rebellion. Mathieu is 12 years old. He was in charge of killing policemen and soldiers. After my Kamwina and Sapu baptism, I was asked to decapitate soldiers, and I did it. They told us it was to save our country. Young girls were sent to the front line, where their so-called magical powers were supposed to allow them to stop the bullets. I needed a little sand on my skirt and I would cast a spell on the soldiers by invoking the ancestors and throwing dirt into the air. And I stopped their bullets and threw them back at them. Witchcraft is an essential part of the Kamwin and Sapu beliefs. Many rituals were performed by the fighters. We used to drink the blood of the victims. It gave us strength and power. To recruit new members, militiamen targeted children and poor people. Their technique to point out the failures of the government. They promised we would get a better life. They said, you have nothing to eat, nothing to drink. We'll help you take charge, you'll be independent. Things will get better, you'll see. Today the whole Kasai region is attempting to heal its wounds with its former enemies, some of whom live among the population. With time, the victims might forgive, but having experienced such intense trauma, it's unclear whether they'll ever be able to forget. You're up to date with uh, Eye on Africa. Coming up next, more international headlines. Stay tuned. You're watching France 24.